let's go ahead and perform the iterations. I'll highlight run calculation. And it's a good idea to do this check case, uh, and it'll do some checks on your uh, setup. So let's do that. And under mesh, it has a um, recommendation about the maximum cell skewness is greater than 0.98. And we saw, you know, when we we're looking at the mesh quality, we saw that it's those cells at the trailing edge. So we know that in verification, we want to, you know, it's important to fix those cells. Okay, we'll we'll go ahead. Oh, by the way, I should also check under solver. Um, consider using higher order discretization for improved accuracy. Um, first order discretization may be used in the initial solution. That's what we are going to do. We just you know, running it for the initial solution. And let's run one iteration first and see how these values change. Oh, I can also, I'm monitoring three quantities here. Um, the residuals, the lift coefficient, drag coefficient. So I can see all of them at the same time. So I'll say, give me three windows. And these will be populated when I run the iterations. Okay, and I'll run one iteration and see how the these uh, the velocity magnitude changes for each cell. So I'll say calculate. You may get that. Just wait for a little bit and try it again. Okay, um, so that's you know, tweaked all the cell center values for our five variables once, and you can see it's it's plotting, you know, the three um, quantities that we are monitoring uh, convergence with. And let me go back and display the contours of the velocity magnitude. And if I zoom in here, I seem to have lost my previous view. You can see that, you know, if I right click on this, it's in the range of like 50, uh, around 50 meters per second. So, um, and you know, hopefully that'll drop, but you can see that even with that no slip condition, you can get very high velocities, uh, velocity gradient. And so, you know, I think you know, that meshes to a course near the, um, the surface. Let's do, um, let's say, 1,000 more iterations. And I will say calculate. After about 228 iterations, it says it's converged. So with first order discretization, it's converged to uh, residuals have fallen below 10 to the power of uh, minus 3. So it's the the mass and the aggregate mass and moment imbalances have dropped by three orders of magnitude. And I'll say OK. And I can see this better. Um, actually, let me first go in here. And I can see that the lift coefficient is point, around 0.9. I'm expecting you know, around 1.1. And the drag coefficient is around 0.05. I'm expecting you know, 0.012. Um, so the lift is. Uh, a little bit higher and the drag is uh, a little bit lower than expected and the drag coefficient is is quite a bit higher than expected though not totally in the wrong ballpark and i can see this better if i go to uh, let me go to monitors and say um, go here let's say i go to drag and i say edit and i'll change the axis and I will change it from, I was playing around with this, so I'll say y-axis, give me a range from, say, point 0.01 to point 0.08. You can play with these numbers, and I'll say apply, close, plot. So now I can see that variation better. And similarly for the lift, you can go and change it for the lift. Um, I used to range from 0.8 to 1.2. I won't do that here in the interest of time. And so I'll say cancel. 
And now I'll go and change my solution methods, everything to second order. Okay, so the discretize, it's got a good initial guess and now it'll do, it'll use the second order uh, discretization, the linearized equations that come from that to tweak the cell center values. Okay, so I'll say run calculation and I'll say calculate. I'll say okay there. Okay, so after, you know, um, 290 iterations cumulative, it says the second order is converged, which is good. Um, and the lift coefficient has gone up, which is a, a good trend to see. And the drag coefficient has come down to about, you know, 0 0.026, which is also very encouraging. And you can see that, you know, the, the first order gives you a much higher drag coefficient, which is a problem, but it's also its, um, its advantage because what it's doing is putting increased dissipation and increased dissipation, you know, it'll increase the drag coefficient, uh, will give you a more inaccurate drag coefficient, but it'll also stabilize the solution. Okay, and now um, go in and change the residual tolerances to 10 to the power of minus six. I'll say okay. Oh, before that, I should go and check the contours. Um, so I'll say display. Okay, now I see that. Uh, let's see, what is that cell center value? It's actually gone up. Um, that's interesting. And you know, that's, that's a region where um, the flow is accelerating as it's going around the nose. Um, a fluid particle accelerates. And, and so you can see, you know, it's gone from zero to about 70 meters per second in that short distance and that's what you know the turbulence does and you get these very thin turbulent boundary layers and when the flow is attached so we need to fix that mesh um, okay and go ahead you know go ahead and iterate run thousand more iterations and um, let's see and let's see how that changes the solution Okay, so here's my dashboard after I've run 1,000 iterations. And if I look at the aggregate mass and momentum imbalances, they, you know, the momentum imbalances are actually pretty small. Um, they're of the order of 10 to the power of minus eight. So they have dropped by, um, they've, they've dropped by quite a bit. And the, um, the mass residual is of the order of 10 to the power of minus six. And this, you know, and, and it gets to a point where the, the residuals in K and epsilon be, start flattening out. Um, it's set at a level of 10 to the power of minus six. Um, so I might have, you know, a slight linear, a, a larger linearization error in my eddy viscosity um, that I'm using in, in, the ma in the momentum imbalances. But, but I think, you know, it's, uh, in general, my feeling is that linearization error is, is reasonably small and maybe it's good to run thousand more iterations and check that the drag coefficient and the lift coefficient, um, the, you know, these two are not changing very much. So, and, you know, I can see that the lift coefficient is pretty close to the exponential value and the drag coefficient has, has dropped by a lot. Um, it's still fairly higher than the, the exponential value, but I think that's because of my near wall mesh. So at this point, I'll say, okay, you know, the linearization error is uh, is ac acceptably small, and I have a good solution to my uh, mathematical model, and I can move to post-processing and save the project before you move on to post-processing. 